And we return to the place where our journey ended a year ago. Welcome back to the A's franchise, everybody. Today begins the American League Championship Series as our A's make their return. This year, meeting the Baltimore Orioles. We're coming off a best of five series victory in the ALDS against the New York Yankees as we emerge victorious in game five putting together our best postseason games so far. Eight runs scored, had a grand slam with you, Sneel Cruz. It was a pretty promising performance. And now we test our luck against the Orioles in a best of seven series to go to the World Series. Here is the top of the Orioles roster with a 23-year-old pitcher and then 25-year-old second baseman Jackson Holiday. They don't have the same core they began the series with, yet they're still in this position, which is pretty impressive. It does appear that Greg Anderley did take a little bit step back in his game this year, but he is their ace. He's who we're going to see in game one, and we're going to go through games one and two in today's video. They've got some really good starting pitching. We'll see how much offense they have with Jackson Holiday leading the way. Andy Rodriguez replaced Adley Rutschman at catcher. Tyler O'Neill in center. Colton Kowser also in the outfield. We would see Aaron Judge. However, he's on the injured list at age 36. We're going to start this series with Logan Gilbert taking the mound, and we're probably not going to see Joe Michael until Game 4 or Game 3. But Gilbert starts, and then it's Waldachuk. Being that there's an off day between Games three and four, or games 2 and 3, I think Michael could probably pitch right here, because that would be 4 days rest, and then he'd also be in line to pitch uh, Emergency Game 6 or Game 7, depending on... The situation we're in. Looking forward to getting this one underway, everybody. We could not finish the job last year, but we've got some more experience going into this series. We'll see if we've got the team that can get it done. So, settle in as we go through the first two games of the ALCS. Logan Gilbert gets the start. It's always... An interesting game when he's out here. It feels like it's never just a straightforward game. Over for a strike. Jordan Westberg leads off for the Orioles. Now, last time that Gilbert pitched, this was the pitch that did, uh, did us in. The splitter. Usually one of his best pitches was just not splitting quite right, I guess. Westberg pops this back. He's one of those guys where you've really got to just throw everything out there in the first and see if you're getting the good version of the bad version of him. Good start, though, as he strikes out Westberg on the curve. Tyler O'Neill, big power hitting outfielder. Not sure if he's uh, quite the same player at this stage of uh, the series. Does have a couple postseason homers already. Big cut there. Gilbert 0-2. All right, can we trust the pitch tonight? It appears it is off the, the leg guard there of Soderstrom. Lifted in shallow center. It's Aaron Don for the second out. Jackson Holiday is next. Jake Fraley, the DH. Yeah, it's a very different uh, lineup than if you had just started off a franchise here with the O's. Holiday on the ground. Vargas sends the inning for Logan Gilbert. Pretty good 1-2-3 start for him. Now, what I want to see is can the offense pick up where we left off? Because in the, the postseason games we've had so far in this series, we haven't exactly... Done great offensively. We've had a couple standout games. Last game felt like a bit of a turning point, but only if we can maintain that success. Hitting 190 is Miguel Vargas. And Anderle already 0-2. Good slider there. Throws a sinker in the mid-80s. No actual fastball here, and he's not really going to hit the 90s all that often. 
Got him! Good slider through two back-to-back -back in the same spot. And it's strike three. How many times can he nail that spot? I'm impressed. That time did it with the cutter. Wow, right there again, but this time dribbled through a base hit for a rise. So it does appear he knows how to attack low in the zone, which is kind of a spot I can get into trouble with. Fran Mil Ray has had two homers in the ALDS. Trying to attack low again. We've kind of figured out what his game plan is going to be. Not that it was a mystery. Ooh, that by him. Right to third base, and Reyes lines out for the second of the inning, which will bring up Tyler Soderstrom. Right up the middle it goes. Base hit with a rise holding at second. So two base hits off of pretty low pitches there in the strike zone. And that's going to bring up you, Sneal Cruz, who gave us the biggest hit of Potentially the entire 100 plus episode series. Giving us that go ahead grand slam and a playoff series victory. Two on, two down. Good try. You bet here, 3-0, oh, the light is still green for Cruz. But we're taking that one. Got him out in front that time. Three and two. He can send the runners. Big pitch already in the first from Greg Onderley. Ball four. It was Trey Sweeney who got the bases loaded double back in the ALDS. Which was that? Game two? Game one? Three? I think it might have been three. Popped up, and this one looks to end the inning. We give Anderley a scare, but he gets out of the jam. We can hit that spot just like Anderley did as Gilbert gets ahead of Jake Fraley. Got him! There's the splitter. Never mind that it didn't go where I wanted it to. Right to Guerrero, and that will wrap up a one, two, three second. Bottom two, we got Cabrera leading things off. Two, two count, and a line drive right to short for the first out. You know, Guerrero wasn't bad in that first series. Hitting 235, you know, it's certainly not great, but I thought he had a, a positive impact on the offense as Anderley. Gets away with his worst pitch so far. Hopefully there's something worse than that. Tapper over the mound, and it's charged for out number two. But this guy just cannot get it going here in the postseason. Aaron Don sitting 0-6-7. How long before he comes off the bench? Because we just can't let him keep doing this. We got to get somebody in there that can produce. To left field on a line. Off the glove. Don going to hustle his way to second base, and he's in there. And that's going to help out the average a bit. But can you get him home? Miguel Vargas will try Anderley inside. He's really good at hitting those low strikes. I am really impressed. Anderley trying to leave another runner in scoring position. Three and two. Got a rise on deck who gave us our first hit. You know, Vargas is also due. No! Chasing strike three. Gilbert six up, six down, and trying to make it seven. There it is. Gets Blake Sable, the seven hitter. That'll bring up Dylan Beavers. This is, uh, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but it's quite a sharp start for Logan Gilbert. Center field, and that is down for Beavers, a base hit. He'll hold at first. 
And then Kobe Mayo is the nine hitter, hitting 167 in the postseason. Splitter is in there. It's not quite finding the right spots yet, however. Ooh, tough one there to take. Two and two in there. Strike three. Runner takes off. Soderstrom. Not in time. Thought he had him. I'm never quite sure, though. I'm usually wrong, whatever I uh, think is going to happen there. Lifted for Cabrera. And now the Orioles leave a runner in scoring position. Pretty fast pace to the entire postseason, honestly. We haven't had a lot of offensive field games or anything. These games have mostly breezed along. We're bottom three, Yonderly versus Arise. A drive to right! Arise! Deep and gone! Got a really nice slider there, and Luis Arise flashes that power that's transformed his impact to this offense. Second homer of the postseason. I know he's turned into a power hitter in this series, but I never, like, come to the plate with him, and I'm like, yeah, we're about to hit a home run here, or I'm looking for an extra base hit. It's still, like, I think he's going to get a single that barely drops in or something. That's not who he is, and it's one nothing Oakland. Ooh, that's got a chance in deep right field. Run down, though. Six RBIs in the postseason for you, Sneal Cruz. Four coming on one swing. Batting with two down, and Onderly gets him out in front. Pitch count's already close to 50, actually. And I do feel like we're starting to see him get more elevation on his pitches. He's not hitting that bottom third as easily. Well, I don't have to help him out. He misses inside a full count. Really having to earn these outs. A drive lifted. Deep right field and caught just like the one earlier. But hey, we're on the board. And we're starting to show a little pop here. 108 RBIs this year for Tyler O'Neill. That's pretty good. That should be strike two. I'd like a redo on that call. 37th pitch and a swinging strike. Gilbert definitely feels sharper than usual. All right, Gilbert, come on now. Don't prove me wrong within 10 seconds. That's obnoxious. Three and two and buy him. Strike three. What are you checking on the location? That was middle middle, Tyler. You got to know your own strike zone a little better. Gilbert's got him two and two. Just low on the splitter. Full count. Ooh, a nice one in on the hands, but fought off by Holiday. Pitch number nine is just outside. Holiday earns the pass, and that'll bring up Fraley. Holiday a stolen base threat as that's lined foul. Take a peek over. Oh, and two. Runner stays put. Fraley fouls three pitches off all away. Soderstrom believes in the splitter this time, and I guess he knows best. Strike three on Fraley, and that brings up Ramos. Elliot Ramos, 0-1. Oh, Taken low. Already a uh, longer inning than I would like for Logan. Oh, I see that extra step. Now he goes, and Ramos does us a favor as we threw a slower off-speed pitch, which we will do again. And it's rolled slowly through the middle. Two on now for Baltimore. Oh, 
feel like this inning has gone on long enough. Yeah, I'm starting to get nervous here with Logan. A little too much over the middle there. Good splitter. This time he makes the play, and the inning is over. And now we'll see about Anderle if he starts to uh, regain command or if we can continue to uh, push towards this Baltimore bullpen. Get Sweeney on one pitch. Good pitch in there for strike one. Really should have been strike two. Pitch 60. Lifted to right and caught. Base hit left field. Guerrero does it again. At least he's helping us out, right? It's not what we wanted exactly, but we got to take what we can get at this stage. Lines out to third base, and the inning is wrapped up. Pretty good frame there for Anderle. I think I want to start getting somebody warm. Surprise, surprise, it's going to be Aaron Ashby. Bottom of the order now for Logan. If we get through this cleanly, we'll see about the sixth. But in a one-run game, I might lean towards using our best bullpen arms. Going to have games one and two today and three and four next episode, all guaranteed. Rolled over softly to arise. But I'm sure you're wondering, Kane, where's the football? You said there'd be football in December. The football is coming. I know what team I will be using now for my new Madden series. I think I'll be starting that up either later this week or early next. I, I have a team in mind, though. I'm excited to build. And uh, I do plan on picking up at the end of the 2023 season. Arise, staying warm. Out number two. At this point, I am leaning towards just keeping the series on PS5. It is obviously just easier than uh, switching over to PC, which I'm less familiar with. Gilbert grazes the upper edge, strike three. Pretty good five inning showing, I'd have to say. If you want any hints on the team I'll be using in my franchise, I'll tell you they're in the AFC as opposed to the Saints on my main channel, who are obviously in the NFC. And they did not make the postseason. And uh, it's not the New England Patriots, although it would have been a great choice. So that'll narrow it down somewhat for you. Bottom of the fifth inning. Arise two for two. Underly's given up five hits. He's 65 pitches in and probably has the energy for this inning, but not much more. Ah, chasing the low cutter. Underly picks up the strikeout. It's his third. That's a rocket to left field. Another one right at somebody. This has been a theme it feels like throughout the series. A lot of our best contact is made in the most inopportune of locations. Oh well. Gilbert's in there with the 12-6. Yeah, that one inning got away from him, but still. Going strong here. Five and a third in, and now strike three on Tyler O'Neill. This is what I thought we'd be getting when we signed him to a multi-year deal worth $20 million a season. Six shutout here in the ALCS. Hard to believe one's going to be enough, though. CJ Jensen and the bullpen is active now for Baltimore. A little more velocity to handle now. Just haven't done great, you know, getting used to the starter for four or five innings and then the bullpen arms come in and I've just been lost in so many of these games. Felt good to get some runs late, though, in the last game. Bit of a confidence booster there. A drive lifted and that's out to right field and again caught near the track. 
We've had some chances in this game. I think we've had some decent swings. But the pitching continues to rule the postseason. On the ground now. A couple hops on to short and a routine play. Close, but off the plate. Three and one on Trey Sweeney. Haven't had too many one, two, three innings. And that's not going to be the next one. Sweeney is on for Miguel Cabrera. And in on the hands, got jammed, and it does drop in for a base hit. Miguel Cabrera finds the perfect patch of grass to leave this one, which gives Vladimir Guerrero an opportunity. You got to take advantage. Ooh, his strike zone's getting a little tight. All right, makeup call on the next pitch. Can't even be mad. Good change up. Guerrero down two strikes now. Trying to spark something with two gone. And now the count even. When's the last time we got to see Vladdy really get a hold of one? Anybody remember? Because I, I have no clue. Strike three. Well, they're going to face our bullpen now. Starting with Aaron Ashby. Not sure yet if I want one or two innings here. All depends. Fraley on the first pitch. Deep right field and tying the game. Wow. Lefty lefty against the best bullpen pitcher we've got. And just like that, the shutout is broken up. Jake Fraley. On a sinker that just stayed up. Shocking. That one didn't get down either. A little concerning here with Ashby's command. Two and two. Good pitch there. No worries on the 12-6 that time. Impressed he made contact. Ramos. Again lifted foul. Bouncing a curveball, it's full. Got him, strike three. That's more like it. And this one softly flied to right field, and that's the top of the seventh. But the Orioles get their biggest swing so far on a really surprising home run for Jake Fraley. Let's see if we can get that run back. This guy hit over 20 home runs a year ago and uh, did not do the same this year. Seven homers in his first full year, 25 the following, and then 13. Who exactly is Aaron Don? Three years in, I have no idea. He's a pretty good player, though. Two and two, and didn't have to chase that. Wow, a slider gets a call low to Vargas. Could have been a 3-1 count. Instead, it's even. And bouncer fielded, and covering is Jensen. Well, the only reason we have a run is this guy right here. Arise will bat with two away. Just off the plate. A full count to Luis Arise. Again, not many one, two, three innings for the Orioles. Ball four. And we are going to run for him here with Zach Geloff, who will take over defensively. So let's see if we can give Geloff a chance to run. Here is Fran Mil Reyes. Two gone. Bouncer fielded at third base. And got him. As Jensen gets away with a hung changeup. 
Geloff takes over at second base and taking over as the pitcher is Eli Morgan, who's had three solid appearances so far. So Aaron Ashby, he's been more 50-50 in this run. He's had a couple outings that uh, weren't what we wanted as Rosario sneaks one through. Maybe he could have dove there, but with his speed, would have been tough to make the play. Kobe Mayo in the bottom of this Orioles order. Ooh, good fastball away. Got him! Strike three. Morgan's been really good here in the postseason. Ahead of Westberg and doesn't get him there. Into center. That's down for a hit. And Rosario on his way to third base. He's in safely. And the Orioles have first and third with just one gone. Tried to get a fastball inside. And that's close to where I wanted it. About there. Wanted it a little more in. But now Tyler O'Neill in a really big spot. Off of Morgan. He's not going to make the play at home and gets nobody. And Baltimore has taken the lead. Now we got to try and limit this to uh, just one run here in the eighth. Holiday 0-2. Drifting outside. Count is even. On the hands, Vargas with the tag. They have a lot of speed here, so I wanted to make sure we got the first guy. And then it's going to be Fraley. Might not hurt to get the fresh arm in there. Let's see if Palante can end the inning. I did think we could get that tag applied and a throw in. Sometimes those take a little more time than you expect initially. Jake Fraley. Ooh, 12-6 gets a call. Got him. But the Orioles get one, and now the pressure is on our bats to answer. Again, I didn't expect that one would be enough. And now we face the lefty, Giovanni Moran. And he's going to come in immediately to face Soderstrom. Cruz behind him, and then Sweeney, who we could always pinch hit for. Ooh, right by him at 94. A 2-2 two -two count now. On the hands, and popped up for the catcher. Big at-bat here with the righty, Usneel Cruz. A drive lifted out to center, but that's going to be routine. I think we got a pinch hit here. Going to make the move here with Royce Lewis and see if he can give us a spark with two gone. Cabrera behind him if we can extend the inning. A drive lifted again to center field, and that's going to be playable. We're down in order, and we're headed to the ninth. And Kendrick Haynes is going to get his first postseason appearance this year. Looking for a 1-2-3 inning that can get us to the ninth. One swing away from tying. Ramos leads off and goes around. There's the fastball that he waves at. 0-2. Oh, That's past Guerrero in down the line. Ramos looking to hustle into second base. And he gets there with the leadoff double. Lifted to Cabrera now. And if we could see a throw. No test. Cabrera's still got a ways to go. Falling behind Sable now. Haynes 3-1 and way outside. It's ball four. 
Always seems to be a roller coaster ride with Kendrick Haynes. Ahmed Rosario now with one of the biggest moments of the game with his base hit. And now he tries right field. Cabrera over again. Makes the play. Kobe Mayo, two on, two down. Hung the changeup, and he's ahead of it. There's a hole in your back, Kobe. 0-2. Oh, a drive to left. Cruz late break. Can't get there. One run scores, and they wave home the second, and it's 4-1 to one, Orioles. Unbelievable. Threw him a two-strike fastball, and he belts it to left. To make this play, Cruz can't afford the full step here. This play has to be perfect. That first step is the wrong way. You've got to recover that half step, and that's about how much he missed by. That's over Guerrero, and we're not done here in the ninth. Extra bases, and the Orioles really putting this one out of reach. So we get the excellent start from Logan Gilbert, and then it's the bullpen. Three different arms giving up runs, and it's 5 one -0s. James Tompkins, he has not had an outing yet in the postseason. He's tasked with closing us out. In a very demoralizing game. Lifted, shallow left. Easy play. Rolled to short, routine play. No drama yet. And the Orioles have come in to take game one in Oakland. Logan Gilbert had a really good start, and we just could not follow it up with our bullpen and obviously only generated the one homer. That's a rough one here, as the A's have failed to win consecutive games yet in the postseason, and we're going to have to find a way to do it. That's a rough start. Just didn't get a whole lot from our best bats in this one. Bottom of our order had three hits, and we had three of the top four batters not even reach base today definitely gonna feel the pressure going into this next game as ken waldachuk takes on tristan mckenzie the offense has just been very inconsistent this year and we have yet to string together two impressive games in a row in the postseason so we hope we can support waldachuk today and even things up and you get Joe Michael in game three, and hopefully you can get things back headed in the right direction again. Ahmed Rosario, a blast to left field. Cruz not able to make the play. And we're getting started with a first pitch double. Rosario with a big hit in game one and immediately following it up in game two. Colton Kowser getting the start here. Did not play in game one. We got Wald to Chuck, one and two. Got him. Big follow up there. Bouncing ball to Sweeney. Rosario had to stay put, and we got two away. That'll leave the inning up to Andy Rodriguez. The double was scary, but we don't flinch and get the next three. We got to get some runs, though. This has been... It, it's been really frustrating this year to not take a step offensively and to start the way we did and, you know, bounce back, but still not quite the way that I want to. I'm not really worried about the offense. I feel like we're going to have our games. We just need to get a little bit more than we have. Now, if the lineup doesn't generate much in this game, we might have to look at mixing up this batting order a little bit because Vargas hasn't exactly done great leading off. Arise is doing phenomenal behind him. 0-2. 
Good pitch, but not chasing. McKenzie keeps it simple. Fastball, slider, curve. Kind of like a reliever. Base hit, center field. There's Vargas. Got to hope her eye stays hot all the same. 391 average, nobody better. Ooh, I was sure that would hit him. And a close pitch, but three and one. Trying to set the table here in the first. Big pitch. And he misses high at the letters. So here's Fran Mil Reyes, who's only hit 167. He does have a couple home runs, though. Away with the fastball, strike one. Good slider, and now 0 2. Gotta try having a productive at bat here. Got him! Perfect slider away. Perfect pitch from McKenzie. Now Tyler Soderstrom tries to give us a big offensive contribution. Hitting 273. Ooh, fastball fouled back. Was I late on that? Just a little, it appears. Three and one. Well, we know what Cruz is capable of if the bases are loaded. So another big pitch from Tristan McKenzie. Missing low, and here is Cruz. Just last episode, a big grand slam lifted us to a Game 5 victory. The team is in need here once again in Game 2. Way outside. I thought that might... Drill the backstop. A drive to right. It's got carry and it's caught. We got to speed the bat up there. That was a grand slam waiting to happen. We'll take the one though at a first inning lead. But again, just a little bit late on it. But now Trey Sweeney. That was timed up better, I can tell. In the air, right field, and caught. Right at him. So we get the one. We'll take a lead, but one run wasn't enough for us in the first game. On to the second we go. A quick strikeout of O'Neal starts things. Lifted for Guerrero in foul ground. And Waldachuk has retired five straight. Slow roller, a rise on the backhand. Got him. That's going to center field. Guerrero with another single. He's had a lot of those here in the postseason. And that'll improve one of the better averages we have here in the... In the playoffs, we got Aaron Don next in the 105 range now. Sliders up top for strike one. No homers, no RBIs, yet to see a big contribution from him. Wow, McKenzie with a good curve. Can he make a good two strike pitch though to Don? Really want to get uh, a strong start in this one. The one run was nice, but we've got to put up a few more. Three and two now on Don. Wow, we got a break there. It's two on. And the lineup turns over for Vargas. Very lucky on that fastball. Ahead of that one this time at 93. Upstairs, three and two. We loaded the bases in the first. Now Vargas takes ball four. Another lucky break goes our way. The inning should be over right now, but it isn't. One down, bases full. 
Rolled it over on the first pitch. Out of the inning. What a waste. There goes the bat. Two strikes on Sable. And while the Chuck is cooking. Dylan Beavers is seven for his last 10, apparently. He's hitting 643, staggering postseason numbers. And now he's down on strikes. He's retired everybody since the double from Rosario. And now gets the rematch with him. Man, this is a clinic he's putting on right now. Oh, and two. Ground ball, Vargas on one hop. One, two, three. A drive to center now from Reyes. Under this one and cut. So we've created two bases loaded jams. McKenzie is only allowed one and we only have two hits in the game. Had a couple lucky walks last inning, but this umpire is letting a lot of low borderline stuff uh, just go. Under this now, Soderstrom still waiting for a postseason homer, and the wait continues. Going back to last game, we've had a lot of fly ball swings, not a whole lot of line drive swings. Good pitch there from McKenzie. He'd like to keep the bases empty here for once. And that's exactly what he does. That was left up, and the Orioles have their second hit. Jackson Holiday is aboard. Indy Rodriguez out in front while the Chuck quickly gets ahead. Got him, strike three. While the Chuck continues to get ahead of these batters, 0-2 on O'Neal. And a drive to left! Clobbered and gone! Wanted to bury that one inside, and he just catches all of the plate there. The first real mistake he's made. Tyler O'Neill, two-run shot. Now Mayo in the hit column. Three in the inning for Baltimore. This one a base hit. And then jam to a rise. And the pressure again shifts to our offense. 24 balls, 29 strikes for McKenzie. Now 30 strikes. He's in the mid-50s now. He's still got plenty of energy. On the ground. And played at second. Got Sweeney. How do you get on top of that ball? Popped up. We're getting pitches. We're getting chances. And we're doing nothing with them. Trying to get good hittable pitches that have some elevation and it's not fixing things right now at all. Guerrero's hot though, like we're getting hits with him. A lot of guys just don't have a good, uh, good form right now. Aaron Don next. Let that one go. Ooh, wanted that high fastball, gets nothing. Line drive, right at second, and the Orioles end the inning. Frustrating offense continuing for Oakland. We've got to turn it around. Hoping to see Waldachuk bounce back. And he gets the first two of the fifth. And a fly ball hit to left, and Cruz is there. Nothing on the swing for Vargas. 
We've left six aboard in this game. Mackenzie now with two pretty solid innings in a row after giving up bases loaded sequences in the first two. To left field on a line and caught. Popped up by a rise. Feel like nobody's able to make the contact we need right now. McKenzie's not pitching that good. There's damage to be done here, for sure. All it takes is one swing to turn things around, though. Hitting is supposed to be contagious, so let's get a couple in a row. Good 12-6 there from McKenzie. Glad I missed. Driven to left and foul, and now a strike away from finishing the fifth. Another slow offensive output to this point for Oakland. And now a drive belted to center that will be routinely caught. We're through five, and it's been more of the same for Oakland as we near the bullpens becoming a factor. Waldachuk about to throw pitch 50. He's been really good outside of one mistake, really, to Tyler O'Neill. Feel like it's been one of his sharpest outings. That's one place to put it, not where I would have uh, preferred it. Hit the other way, and it's down. Cruz trying to cut it off, and he will not hold him to a single. And the Orioles have a runner in scoring position. Jackson Holiday, then Rodriguez and O'Neal. Do you think about going to the fresh arm? That's what we're going to do here. We've seen Waldachuk give up a couple solid hits, and we're going to make the move here in a one-run game, trying to keep it close. Jonathan Hernandez. On the ground, and staying put is Kowser. One down. Stealing third. Soderstrom easily gets in. Orioles trying to catch us napping. That probably works on a random day in July. Softly tapped and covering Hernandez. But we're bottom six now and we could really use some offense. McKenzie will stay in the game. And he almost hits Cruz on the first pitch. Coming up empty again. Yeah, we timed that one up pretty well. Down the line and foul. Can't say I'm feeling too lucky in this game right now. Although we did have a bases loaded opportunity that we didn't deserve. So maybe it's all evening out. Two and two. Now full. You Sneal Cruz, the young phenom. Takes ball four. A stolen base threat at first. McKenzie. Good 12-6 curve. Do we want to steal here and try to get him to second base? There he goes. Inside and safe at second is Cruz. Trying to at least tie the game. Trey Sweeney, 0 for 2 on the night. Popped up! Man. Is it too late to get a new hitting coach? Miguel Cabrera, he's also hitless on the night. And flies to left. Cruz is going to get there and then hold at third. As we bloop in a single, Cabrera's done that twice now in the episode. So, RBI chance for Guerrero. He's had some big singles. Can he do it now with somebody aboard? Outside. 
right to short, and that will end the inning. I didn't even want to bring it up, but everybody was thinking the same thing there. Base hit right field. O'Neal doing more damage here in the seventh. Forcing our pitchers to pitch pretty perfectly with the lack of scoring. O'Neal takes off and I hit triangle. Soderstrom said no. Punch to right. Cabrera is there. O'Neal's going to test him. And he was right to do so. So now we've got to try and keep him there at third base. Hernandez, not always the best strikeout option here. Can't even get a strike. All right, there it is. Strike two. Full count. And he did not put it where I hoped he would, but it's bounced foul. 3-2. Fouled off again. Popped up. Pitch was missed. Ortiz can't do anything with it. Two gone in the seventh. And this might be a good time to bring in a fresh arm in Ricky Griggs. One guy, Ricky. Well, maybe more. We'll see. But for now, one guy is all I'm wanting you to get. Two strikes. Got him! Ricky Griggs gets the out, and we're still only down one. And now we're going to have to try to get our second run off of Caleb Ferguson. They bring in the lefty. Aaron Don, I think it's the right time to make a move here. Don's going to get taken out for Carlson. Carlson's first at bat of the ALCS. Way outside. Popped him up. How many times have we done that today? Miguel Vargas, he's one for two with a walk. He sends it to right, and that looks to get down for a fair ball. He will make his way to second. It's a one-out double. And that brings up Arise, who is not getting pulled. Ah, oh, man, it's a big spot. I think we are going to make the move here. This is what we were doing during the regular season. We're going to bring in Zach Geloff. We'll take our late inning defensive upgrade and also one of our better lefty hitters. Hitters against lefties. Zach Geloff, pinch hitting in the seventh. The A's feeling a little desperate right now. Got to get a hit. Good fastball, it's 0-2. Popped him up. And that's the second out. The inning is left to Fran Mil Reyes with a man in scoring position. Fly down the right field line, looks to be foul, looks to be caught. Inning over. Ben Murphy is going to enter the game. He only has one inning pitched here in the postseason. And we're going to put him in here losing by one because we have the top of their order. Two strikes on Rosario. I wanted to have him in here to face their best hitters. Sent to Cabrera. Routine. Caught. And softly rolled to Geloff. Murphy gets too quickly, and maybe he can pitch the ninth even. But are we going to be able to get a run? We haven't scored since the first. 
And even that felt like a missed opportunity. Giovanni Moran is in, so that might force us to pinch hit Sweeney here in a couple of at-bats. Ten runners left on base. And the A's just waiting for someone to deliver that big swing. Bounced it to second, got out in front. Feels like a pretty big at-bat here. Maybe our most dangerous hitter could be his last chance to help us in this game. Ball one. In the air to right, easy. And Royce Lewis will enter the game again like he did the previous game. It was a very disappointing year for Royce Lewis as he grounds to second base and we head to the ninth. Having a heck of a time getting Holiday here. Murphy staying in the game and gets Holiday up and in. Base hit drilled to center field and the Orioles have a base runner. Seventh hit of the night. We do have Henry Vasquez getting warm. Haven't had to use him since his really bad outing in the ALDS. Good sinker and ahead of O'Neal. That's blocked by Soderstrom. I threw it to the wrong base. Punched over to Guerrero though, and that will be the out. Kobe Mayo. Had a big hit back in game one. Pitch count a little high here for Murphy. This probably should be the last batter he faces. Two and one. Popped up. The ball continues to go sky high from both teams. Bottom of the ninth now. Last chance for the A's. No run since the first, and we have the bottom of our order up. Clark Schmidt looking for the save. And he'll open against Miguel Cabrera. Ten runners left on base tonight for our A's. A slider in there to Miguel. He does have one of our six hits in this game. And he's got a second one. Base hit right field. The tying run is aboard. And that's going to bring up Vladimir Guerrero. Rounded into a double play in his last trip. Has two of our hits. We've already basically emptied the bench in this game. Popped up. Foul ground. One down. Carlson up now. Up and away. Popped it back on an elevated fastball. We got too far ahead of it. Good change up to follow it up. Two strikes now on Carlson. Tapped it for the catcher. Rodriguez gets the only play he's got at first base. Cabrera to second. And the game is on the line for Miguel Vargas. Two outs. Off the plate with a sinker. Vargas has reached three times in this game. Ball two. Didn't have to wave at that. That was ball three. Thought we might get something else there, 0-2, but... Trick me a little bit. Strike two. Got him with a fastball, and the Orioles have taken the first two in Oakland. One run in each game is all we could score. 
And the A's now have to go on the road for the next two games, only three if we earn it. If we fix this series, it's going to be on the road. What a frustrating couple of games this was. I just wanted to see the swing feedback on that last one. I felt like it could be late. I think it was, yeah, it was late. Yeah, we're putting the ball in play a lot. Just four strikeouts in this game. It's just been really tough to get runs, man. It's It shouldn't be this challenging with this team. They got us for seven pop-ups in this game. And I think a lot of those had pretty decent timing. We had 17 fly balls as well. Like, we're trying... You know, to be this power-hitting team, it feels like, but it's just not there for us. So, suddenly, our season's on the line in our next episode. We're going on the road. We've got Baltimore pitching Andres Nunez, and we're going to make sure we get Joe Michael in this one. But even if we get excellent pitching, it's not going to matter. In our seven postseason games now, we have three games where we've only scored one and another game we only scored two. We've only scored more than three twice. So if the offense wants to uh, show up, maybe we'll have a chance. But if not, the pitching can only be so good. Arise, Guerrero, Vargas, and Soderstrom all have at least six hits so far in the series. Cabrera's done well. I thought he had a couple good at-bats in this episode. Quiet one for you, Sneel Cruz, but drove in one of our two runs in the whole video, so there's that. Got a lot of guys that we could use more contributions from, and we'll see if we get it next episode or our season could be over. Thank you all for watching today's episode. Definitely a tough one. You know, our team's been inconsistent, but that means we also have our good days as well. And hopefully we can get some in our next two games. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.